Hey, Peptide Guru here, and listen, I've had a lot of people reach out to me, and they want to know what's the best peptide. Is it the injectables, or is it the ingestibles? So I'm going to be doing a couple of different videos talking about this, so you can get the information that you need, and you can make the best decision for your life. Now, when it comes to injectable peptides, let's start from the beginning. They're still experimental. There's not a whole lot of long-term information we have on them. Um, can they be effective? Yes, but there are side effects and no one seems to want to talk about that. So let's talk about what they do uh, and the side effects about it and also how often do you have to do an injectable. So let's start off with the most popular one out there, right? Is BPC-157. Everyone's talking about that. Here's the deal. Promotes healing and various, of various tissues. Sure it does. In the gym, man, you can pop that and you have faster recovery. And that's great. The problem is, is that it may cause nausea and upset stomach and the short half-lives ranging from minutes to a couple of hours. So you're frequently having to inject yourself to try to stay in homeostasis. And remember, life is all about balance. Homeostasis just means balance. So with BP-157, very popular, you're going to be constantly injecting yourself to try to keep uh, the effects that you want. The next one is TB-500. We're going to keep moving here. Accelerates the healing and reduces inflammation. The problem with TB500, the side effects increase risk of cancer and potential of unusual hair loss and growth. So is that worth it? You're going to have to make your own decision. So it has a short half-life. So you're going to be constantly having to inject yourself with this one with the increased risk of cancer. CG, uh, CJC1295 simulates the release of growth hormone. Hey, human growth hormone does so many things. That's the key to so many parts and function of your body. But um, we're still using a synthetic. It's not your own natural one. So it's going to help uh, do, uh, get that release. But the side effects are water retention, joint pain, increased hunger, tingling, and numbness when you're shooting, uh, shooting the CJC1295. And it has a you know, moderate level. It stays in your, your system for about a week. Um, so you'll have to make the decision on that. GHRP6, GHRP2 stimulates the pituitary gland to produce more growth hormone. Exactly. That's what we just talked about. Human growth hormone comes from the pituitary, pituitary gland and it will actually stimulate that. But the side effects are water retention, increased hunger, joint pain, elevated blood sugar levels, and it has short half-lives, also meaning that you're going to have to keep dosing yourself multiple times a day with the GHRP6 and the GHRP2. So you'll have to make the decision on that, but there's your side effects and what it does. PT-141 treats sexual dysfunction in men and women. The uh, side effects are <laughs> nausea, vomiting, headaches, flushing, increased blood pressure, and skin darkening. Um, you may have a uh, duration of uh, uh, lacking several hours. So again, it varies in different people about how often you're going to have to shoot that to get the effects. So you want increased sexual function, but you've got some pretty heavy side effects here. Again, it's a synthetic, and we still don't know the long-term effect. And the HCG uh, injectable peptide uh, treats uh, fertility issues and promotes weight loss. That's a great thing, right? Our side effects are headaches, irritability, uh, restlessness, depression, swelling, and the list goes on and on. Uh, and it has a longer half-life, around 24 to 36 hours, which is better than the PT-141. So these are the most popular injectable synthetic peptides out there. Remember, they're still experimental in nature, and they have varying effects um, on the human body. So I hope that answers some of your questions about these peptides, and you have to make the decision yourself if you want to use injectables instead of ingestible peptides. So we'll see you again. We'll start talking about our ingestible peptides.